Hey guys, welcome to the 10th and final video in the C-Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we're going to finish implementing the Sharp Update interface in the test app, create the update XML that goes on your server, and test the actual updating of the test app. All the source code for Sharp Update and this test app can be found in the description below. As you can see, I upgraded my computer to Windows 8, and this is actually Microsoft Visual Studio 2012. For you guys, it's going to be basically the exact same. Everything's pretty much in the same spot. It just has a new theme. There are some more features which are nice, but I'm not going to really cover them in this video. To get started on the tutorial, the first thing we're going to do is go to our form of our test app. Now, if you remember in the implementation video, I left this update XML location blank. Well, now we're going to fill it in. We have to decide where on our server we want to put this update XML. I have a domain. It's regamod.com, and it's where I host most of my Android development stuff from XDA developers. My update XML location, which I'm going to choose, is going to be http colon slash slash www.regama.com slash test. I just made a test folder, and we're going to call it update.xml. So this update XML location is where that update XML is going to be on the server. As you can also see, I added this file called big file, and I made it an embedded resource. Basically, when I tested this out earlier, this program is so small, when it downloads, it doesn't really show it downloading because it's so small, it just flashes on and off really quick. So I added this file, I just made it in notepad, it's a big file, and as you can see, it's just a file with a whole bunch of bytes in it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's about 4 megabytes, so it'll make it look better when it's downloading, so for your bigger applications, you can see it downloading and updating the progress bar. Now, if you don't have a domain like me, like regamod.com, or you have a domain and you need hosting for it, I put a link in the description to godaddy.com. That's where I'm hosting regamod.com. And I like it quite a bit. The downtime is fine. I have unlimited bandwidth. I have 150 gigs of storage. So go ahead and click that link in the description if you want to host your website. It's pretty cheap right now, I think. Four bucks a month or something like that. Also, this video is not going to be a tutorial on how to upload files to your server. I might go over that in another tutorial and put that in the computer how-to playlist I made. But for now, I'm just going to upload it and not show you the back end of that uploading. So now what we're going to do is create the actual updated application that we're going to put on our server that we want to download when we check for updates. So we're going to go to our properties under our test app, double click that, and go to assembly information. We're going to change the assembly version to 2.0 and the file version to 2.0 as well. Hit OK, save, and then build it again. I can close out of these properties. I'm just going to run this really quick to show you that it is in fact say 2.0, and right there it does say 2.0. So this is what's going to go on our server, and when it's downloaded it will show 2.0. Now I'm going to copy that and the sharp update DLL into my just my downloads directory. This test app is the one that is version 2.0. So this is what I'm going to upload to my server, and I will do that right now. So now that that's uploaded, let's create our update XML. This is going to be uploaded to the location regama.com slash test slash update.xml. Go ahead and open up Notepad++ or Notepad, and we're going to start creating our XML. As you can see, this is, this is actually my server right here or just one of the folders in the server. And you can see the test app is in there and this update XML is in there. And I'm editing the update actually directly on my server. So the first thing we need to do is add our little XML statement stating it's version 1.0 of XML. So XML, and you do version equals, and then quotes you do 1.0. And this just states that it's an XML version 1.0. The next thing we want to do is our root node of our XML, and that's going to be sharp update. So everything that goes inside the sharp update tags is going to be part of our update XML. So the next thing we want to do is create a node called update and give it an attribute of app ID. And this is what we specified in our sharp update XML class, where it checks for an attribute of app ID in the update node. And then we'll set that to test app, because that's what we set in our test app. And if you're using Notepad++, uh, it may or may not automatically close these tags, but if it doesn't, go ahead and close them. Now we need to add the six nodes that describe our update. So the first one is going to be version. And this just describes what version number is the update. So it's 2.0.0.0, and then close the version tag. The next one is going to be the URL, and that's where the exe is on the server. So it's going to be URL, and then for mine, it's http colon slash slash www.regamod.com slash test slash test app dot exe, and then close out the URL tag. The next one is going to be the file name. So what do you want it to be called after you downloaded it? So it's going to be file name. And I'll just do testapp2.exe. You can change it to whatever you want, and it will rename it when it gets to the computer. And then close out the file name tag. The next one is going to be the MD5, and that is the hash of the file. We need to actually hash this file. I have the Linux core utilities, such as MD5, SSA1, built into my path of Windows. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. So all I need to do is right click here, open command window, it opened on my other monitor, 
and then MD5 sum, and then pass it, well, I'll just pass it all the AXEs because that's the only one, but it automatically computes the MD5 sum. You can also check out my other video on how to hash a file and report the progress. It's in the C-sharp how-to playlist. So once I have the MD5 sum, we can put that right in there, and that's just to verify the file integrity once it's downloaded from the internet. The next one is going to be description, and that's just a quick description of your update. Actually, it doesn't have to be quick, but it's just a description of your update. So I'll just do initial update and close out the description. And the last one is going to be the launch arguments. I'm going to leave these blank for now, but basically these are what's going to be passed as arguments to your program when you launch it. So say you want to pass a new version number so your program can tell you, oh, you've just been updated to this version. But again, I'm just going to leave these blank for right now. Go ahead and save that. As you see, it was updated on my server. If I double click here, it is downloading and this is actual update on my server. Now we can go ahead and test our application. I'll close out of this, close out of that. Now we'll go back and make sure this is set to version 1.0 again, because if it's set to version 2, well, there will be no update. Go ahead and save and build it again. I'm going to minimize this really quick. And this is the version 2.0 it looks like. Yes. Delete that and I will I will bring in the new version, which is version 1.0. As you can see, version 1.0. And run it. As you can see, it says version 1.0 right here. And I'm going to hit the check for updates button. Hmm. Nothing happened. My guess is there's an error in the... XML that I just wrote, so we'll check that out. Oh, app ID, the D needs to be lowercase in app ID, and now it should work fine. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll check for updates again. Ah, there we go. A new version is available. Would you like to update? And it's to version 2.0 on the server. It has initial update right here. Go ahead and hit back. When we hit yes and it downloads, our application will be closed. It will delete our original application, move the downloaded temp application into place here, named test app 2, which we specified in our update XML, and then launch that with the launch arguments. Now the only editing here is going to be me speeding up the download because I have a feeling it's going to take a little bit of time because my connection is not that great. But the launching of the application and everything like that is all exactly what is going to act you're going to actually see. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes now. All right, the download's just about done, so it's about to update. And it deleted it, and it just launched it, and it says version 2.0, and that's exactly the one from our server. There you have it, everybody. The Sharp Updater is complete. That's it for this video tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit the like button if you did, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in another tutorial.